Hey guys, Brian from 5 to Go, back again with Ben. Uh, this is part two of a three-part series where we are talking all about the uh, extra things he has added to his new Horizons Majestic here. Uh, we did a full tour video about six months ago when we were in the desert in Arizona. And uh, just a few minutes ago, we did a run through of all of the storage stuff. So if you want to see all of that, there, we'll see a lot of it again, but there's a deep dive in that in the previous episode. This episode, we're talking all about internet access and what this guy does for internet stuff. And he's kind of our internet guru on our Discord server. I like to say that I'm a, a recovering network engineer. Yeah, you'll never recover. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he has a lot of stuff. So first, we're gonna go up on the roof and see what's up there. When we come back down, we're gonna put two full-size men in here because that's how big this basement is. And we're gonna talk about all of the other stuff that's down in here that handles all of his networking. So uh, let's head up top. All right, so up top we've got uh, two solar panels. Two more solar panels. A lot of wind, so sorry about that. Uh, there's a Ben up here. Hey. There's two more solar panels. And then we've got a Weingart Air 360 Plus. Uh, we've got a Starlink dish, a Gen 2 dishy. Uh, but the, the kind of the heart of it is this piece right here, right? This is the, uh, actually this is the solar junction box. Oh. It brings that in. It also brings Dishy down too. Gotcha. Um, so it's those. Those are the antennas. These are the antennas. Okay. Both of those antennas go straight down into the basement. Okay. Via that gray junction box. Okay. And we'll see that downstairs in just a minute. Yep. yep. All right. So you don't always put the dish up here, right? I almost always put the dish up here. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. You stay My... places longer than we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it takes me five minutes to put it up here. Yeah. I have a little um, cinch backpack that wraps around this. Okay. Thanks to uh, another one of the Roadrunners who okay. uh, gave that to me. Nice. Adam. Yeah. It's real easy to just jump up on the ladder, throw that on my back and jump up on the ladder. Okay. The cable stays up here. Okay. I coil it around the Weingart 360. Oh, which is gotcha. Probably its most useful attribute. <laughs> um, it does do pickup TV pretty well though. Right. It's nice because I can tuck the legs of the dishy uh, mount mm -hmm. under my, uh, just slightly under the rails for the solar panels. And it helps. I, I've never had any issues with the tipping or yeah. pulling away from it. I think the they're, they're relatively aerodynamic. They don't get blown over too easily. Yeah. It's not an inexpensive piece of equipment. No, no it is not. <laughs> I don't want it flying off the side of my roof. Yep, so that's how it's connected there. Yep. Alrighty, let's uh, let's get down off here before we get blown off. <laughs> Colorado wind. Yeah. Hey, we are downstairs and we are both in the basement, and uh, this is where the magic happens. So we have uh, what do we have over here? You're just gonna walk me through everything. Okay, so this here is a little rack that I fabricated to hold both of my Pepwave routers. Yes, I have two, um, and then this fan unit from AC Infinity on top that mm -hmm. helps just exhaust heat off of these because they do get fairly warm yeah. when you're when they're running, especially if it gets warmer in here. Yep. Uh, also because all of this DC wiring is all screwed down, terminals and everything and all wired into the battery, if I need to reboot them, physically power mm -hmm. cycle them, I have these switches I added here to do that. Right. Um, and then which model of the <clears throat> waves are those? These are the Transit Pro. Transit Pro. So you got two of those. And then what was up top that we were looking at in the super heavy Colorado wind? Um, so we had, uh, obviously we had Dishy, the Starlink dish, yep. the rectangular one. Um, and then we had two Parsec Husky antennas. Uh, they are able to do uh, two 4G radios or a single 5G radio. With each dish? With each antenna. Yeah. Okay. And because and I have I have four cellular modems, Jeez. I need two antennas. Okay. And they are LTE. I don't have 5G anything. 5G, still very bleeding edge. Yeah. Um, and frankly, the hardware isn't all that great okay. for the cost to, to invest into yeah. it. So, so I, I know we're going to get comments about it. Someone's already typing... <clears throat> what actual services do you have? Like, what SIM chips do you have in here? Which, like, plans or whatever do you have running right now? I have AT&T, I have Verizon, and I have two T-Mobile connections. Okay. And the, are these all, like, off-the-shelf ones, or are they business or T-Mobile is business. Okay. Um, AT&T is reseller, and Verizon is uh, grandfathered unlimited prepaid. Ah, those are always fun. All right, and then Starlink... 
Uh, that's we're gonna <coughs> move over to this side, right? Starlink is hiding right up here. Yep. So Starlink's coming in over here. So uh, yeah, I see the big uh, second gen router up there. Yep. And then, incredibly annoying to mount, yeah. and so I just put it sideways. Right. I was wondering. I thought that was a dish earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I do not use the Wi-Fi on it at right. all. Right. So. So you have the um, Ethernet adapter, which is the gray thing, right? Yes. Okay. Elon, please allow me to turn off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Um, cause it's just polluting my air, airspace. Right. Um, so, so yes, got Dishy coming down there. Dishy comes in here. And then Dishy is guys. actually the red cables. Oh, okay. So I actually, and this is the bottom of the, the tube that goes up to the ceiling, right? Yeah. You can kind of see the tube back there. Maybe. Oh yeah. The dark, think. dark gray. Like yep. It curves right here. Yep. That's one of them. There's okay. a second one further back. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so I have two runs through the walls down from the roof. Right. To accommodate all of the cables, because there's there's like seven cables off of each antenna. Gotcha. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then all of that eventually comes through all of these Ethernet cords. Yes. So the PEP waves are the devices that aggregate all of my connections. So cellular and Starlink, and we use Speed Fusion, uh, which is their proprietary VPN protocol, uh, to create tunnels um, to uh, the internet. Okay. Um, so that. If one provider is slower or something goes down mm -hmm. or whatever have you, I don't notice it. It should be invisible on your More side, importantly, yeah. the young kids watching their Paw Patrol <laughs> cartoons don't notice it. They don't get interrupted, yeah. <laughs> um, and Dad, yes, where's the internet? <laughs> and yes, you may have picked up on this. The reason I have two is one is for all of the family stuff and mm -hmm. one is for all of my work stuff. Ah, yes. So okay. I, I, I have dedicated stuff so that I'm not interrupted by the streaming gotcha. services and stuff like that. Awesome. As it should be. Yes. <laughs> Dad's toys. Dad's toys have a, have a modem, yes. All right, so um, this looks like a sideways server rack, basically. Yes, it is. It yeah. is a sideways server rack. It was, really was the best way for it to fit in here. Yeah. Um, That's just a four bay. It is a four bay. Okay. I'm only using, really only three. using three. All right. Um, this is uh, Unify. Okay. Um, this is a Dream Machine Pro, which handles networking. It handles security cameras. It can do some other stuff, but we're not using any of that. Um, and then there is an access switch, um, and then um, uh, an actual like Ethernet switch here. So this is all 10, 10 gigabit between, which is completely absurdly over spec. <laughs> um, but I didn't want to have to deal with. In any other bottlenecks. Yeah. Obviously, the cellular is the bottleneck. Right. Um, and as technology gets better, we will upgrade mm -hmm. components. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it. So I made I built this the way it was. Um, honestly, that, that 10 gig access switch was like the cheapest component. It was like 250 bucks. I was like, wow, okay. Whatever. And then is this the hard drive you were talking about? Hard drive is in here. Okay. Uh, yeah, in the previous episode, I was talking about how. We use uh, a, a four terabyte SSD for storage for the security cameras. Right, so there's the one here and a few outside that yep. are always ready. <clears throat> yep, okay. 24 seven. And then how are the cameras? Are the cameras uh, like power over ethernet? Yes, the cameras are wired and they are power over ethernet. Okay, and that's nice because you only have to run one wire. Yes, one right? cable. Yep. And then, so if you ever see the acronym POE, mm -hmm. power over ethernet. Yep. Very cool. Inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have wireless access points okay. um, mounted to the ceiling. What and, brand? Do you uh, also, Unify. Unify. Okay. Um, they are all tied into the system. It's all one ecosystem. So this ends up being my, you know, my main firewall essentially okay. that brings all of that together. So you have cords going from here mm -hmm. up into the living space to those access points. Yes. And then when, those provide the Wi-Fi for the devices. Yes. When the when the rig was built, I had New Horizons run Ethernet to um, several locations wow. they ran a bunch it ran like four of them back to my office in the mm -hmm. back they ran uh two out to the outside tv area um they ran a bunch to our av cabinet okay inside um and that's above the washer and dryer <coughs> it's above right? the washer and dryer and you no longer have a 360 i no there? longer have an <laughs> xbox 360 i have upgraded that to an xbox series x <laughs> the way that new horizons builds their rigs is they actually build the entire roof as a, a separate unit. Okay. And then they sandwich it on top, or they, they, they stick it on top of the walls 
in place. So they so they have the rig, they have all the walls in place, and then they put the sand, they put the roof on. Hmm. So they have a lot of connections hanging out at certain points okay. for all the lights and and, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was actually I think the first time they put Ethernet in in a roof for access points, hmm. and they were like, well, we can't run them to the basement because. We literally can't do that. They're two separate units until we, you know, we put them together. Mm-hmm. So what happened was I had them run the Ethernet for the access points to where that AV closet was and run extra drops down here from the basement up to the AV closet, okay. and then I just connected them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have some interconnects there for gotcha. the access points, which is cool. Yeah, that works. Let's talk about today's sponsor, Snap Pads. They are a fantastic tool that lets you permanently attach a big, chunky, heavy-duty rubber pad to the bottom of leveling legs. They give you more surface area that keeps you from sinking, it gives you a little bit more grip, keeps you from sliding, and you don't have to carry around more blocks and all sorts of stuff. And also, fifth wheels, the, the legs tend to be out a little bit so you can access them, but with motorhomes, they've tucked those suckers way under there, so if you have blocks that you're putting under there, you're basically crawling on the ground every time you want to put the blocks in or pull them back out. If you go to their website at the URL below and enter in this promo code 52GO10, it's the number two and the number 10, you'll get 10% off. And if you're like us and you have the absolute largest feet that they support and you get the absolute most expensive set, that 10% is going to be nice. So go to their website, do 52GO10 to get 10% off, and you too can have awesome snap pads that we love and you'll love them too. You also have um, temperature sensors down here. Yes. Uh, like you said, you were actually finishing building that yesterday when we got here. Yes. Uh, this was the um, fans to keep those pep waves cool. Yep. Um, you they have temperature were... sensors down here and a passive exhaust up here. Yes. Uh, which we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next episode where we talk about all of um, the really expensive broom holder over here. Yes. <laughs> uh, but do you have anything else down here that helps monitor uh, uptime or... Power or security or anything like that. Um, I see some monitor things over there. Um, this is actually the monitor for the exhaust fan. Oh, okay. Um, so this is the temperature and humidity here of the basement right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little lower because we have all the doors open. Right. As the temperature um, gets higher, it speeds the fan up. Okay. Um, and the whole idea is what we were finding is that all of this electrical equipment mostly, but these pep waves were running pretty warm. This mm-hmm. this gear runs pretty warm as well. Yeah. It was all contributing and creating kind of a heat bubble in here yeah. that wasn't really going anywhere and eventually was actually pushing out into the living space, which that was less of a problem um, through the returns. But mm-hmm. what was happening is our bedroom is right above this, mm-hmm. right? And that air conditioner was working so hard. Oh, and it, it was there actually was enough heat where you were it was feeling enough it through the heat floor? that that it was actually having us wow to the point where it was having a difficult time cooling that air conditioner up front. Holy cow! Uh, it was working constantly. I mean, we have uh, the condensate pumps um, that that pump it down to the ground so that it's not mm-hmm. running off the gutters. Yeah, and that thing was just basically pouring constantly. Oh, you, can just, you can just hear the pump. It's like, Jeez. You know. Um, so, what temperatures have you seen on here? Um, so what I can say is this, um, once we got this fan system in here, it helped a lot. It yeah. helped. It's, it's reduced it. I can't say, you know, I want to say I've seen it at like 80 before, but okay. that's, I haven't seen it much, much hotter than that unless mm-hmm. it's real hot and we have the doors open or something and it's yeah. sucking warm air in. But with it closed, with that fan, it, it tends to pull air this way, which hopefully means that the air conditioned air mm-hmm. from the inside comes in through the the internals and then it comes out and across here and it seems to work pretty well the temperature sensor is right here so it's getting like the warmest spot in, yep. in here mm-hmm. um, I do have that other temperature sensor that's attached to the home automation thing that's right here next to me yep. Yep. Um, before I had the fan and we were in Kansas at New Horizons and it was like 102 degrees. It was like a solid 98 in here. Ooh. Like it was, it was uncomfortable. Yeah. And you could tell all the fans on all the gear was running full full bore. <laughs> and it was like this is this isn't good. Yeah. So if it's 98 here, it's um, a lot a hotter, lot hotter in, there. in there. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. not great. <clears throat> that fan was a big help. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It was also the largest hole I've ever cut in an RV <laughs> because it is a the, the fan blade itself is ten inches oh, in gosh. diameter. The cage is larger. <laughs> So, yeah, I actually had to modify the fan and, and use a whole bunch of hardware to actually put it in there because it's actually on the the underside of the overhang. Like behind the pin box. Yeah, behind yeah. the pin box. So it, it's actually aiming down. So I did a custom grate on it so that it keeps bugs and stuff out. Oh, yeah, because when you're driving, yeah, there's... It's, yeah. yeah, it's definitely... It's between the truck and the... Is there a filter on it? Uh, I don't have a filter on it, but I have it running 24-7. Oh, so it's so at least So this controller pushing. will leave it at a minimum of the second speed, so mm -hmm. air should always be going out, okay. and that fan moves some air, okay. like, real good. Um, so, so you're yeah, not going to be blowing dust and water up into it. Right. Okay. So every four degrees um, over my set point, which I believe I have it set at 68 degrees, anything four degrees over 68, it just increases the speed by one. Okay. And one, 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 all the way up. Gotcha. So it has worked very well. Um, yeah, it does a great job. So for those of us that just have like a single pep wave or a more basic system, do you think any active cooling is necessary or is it just get it in a place that has moving air and it's okay? Um, I think that you might want to look at maybe a small heat sink or something like that. Fact, okay. The equipment, all of this equipment is designed to run in more extreme conditions. You mm -hmm. have to consider that pep wave, a lot of their, their, big customers mm -hmm. a lot of you know our government contracts and, and stuff like that stuff. industrial stuff yeah. so you know you know all those buses that say free wi-fi and, mm -hmm. and anything like that or you have wi-fi you can pay for on on your commuter bus mm -hmm. almost assuredly it's a pep wave in that bus hmm. running on it these things run directly off the battery yeah so they're they're designed to run off of dc power and run just run, 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 and run, and run, run. Yeah. That's why we highly recommend them. Yeah. It's you also know? why they're expensive. It's also why they're expensive. <laughs> they're they, I rugged. mean, they are they are enterprise grade. Yeah. They are rugged hardware, and I have to say, um, if you look at some of the not transit series stuff, mm -hmm. the, there's a reason us RVers only seem to have this kind of brand, this run. You know, the, like the BR ones or the mm -hmm. transits. It's because they have a prime care. Uh, pricing model where the hardware cost is actually low up front, low, mm -hmm. uh, air quotes, <laughs> um, comparatively to some of their other gear. If you look at some of their their standard run gear that's out there, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Like they have a four cellular modem mm -hmm. unit that can do what these do, um, but they mm -hmm. are... I think it starts at eight thousand oh, dollars for the hardware. Good lord! And then you have to have their warranty licensing on top of that, uh -huh. and that's also another several thousand dollars. Holy crap! Now, granted, they'll replace the thing, you know. Yeah, but that's a big difference. I have a BR one over in my rig, and that was only nine ninety nine, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one is difference. that one is definitely the most affordable. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Transit Pros are clocking in at twelve hundred dollars. Okay. Um, I managed to catch. Uh, a sale. I don't know if it was an intentional sale, but I got one of them at seven fifty. I think it was. I think that, or that must have been a pricing issue. <laughs> I, I think so. It got fixed pretty fast, uh -huh. but I did catch one of those. Nice. Um, so I immediately bought it because I knew it was a twelve hundred dollar router. Nice. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Very cool. Hey, look, we can both fit. Yeah, we're both in here. This is where I've been crammed in for this entire episode. Proof. <laughs> and both of my legs are asleep. <laughs> so are mine. All of this information is uh, available on our Discord server, and uh, Ben is on there all the time. Like I said, he's kind of our internet guru on that server. So if you have any questions about any of this, any of the storage stuff you see in here, and any of the electrical stuff you're going to see in the next episode, go to 5 togocom slash Discord and join us on that server. It's a completely free chat service. Um, it's uh, There's a couple thousand people in there. We talk about all sorts of stuff. But one of the most popular channels are the two internet channels that are on that server. You'll find me in RV Internet. You'll find him in RV Internet Advanced. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a reason we had to split that because uh, I'm I'm not a I'm a nerd, but this is a whole nother level of nerd. So he got an advanced channel to talk about all that stuff. So if you have any questions about any of the hardware, the setup, the software, wiring, like any of it. Jump in there, look for Ben K. <laughs>
Yeah, I like to I like to say that I'm a, a recovering network engineer. Yeah, you'll never recover. No, I know. <laughs> this and is and now I'm. This, this, is, right this is absolute proof that I will never recover from it. And then I'm also adding on electrical stuff, yep. even though I'm not actually an electrical engineer. Uh, speaking of which, that's coming up next. So stay tuned for that, and we will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Bye.